Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Grand Theft Auto Online. If you enjoy this video, please vote for me to win the number one spot for the most popular educational Christian music YouTuber, as this would really help spread the good word of my channel. Meet Agent 47, a retired hitman who is on a mission to become the most powerful crime lord in Los Santos, whilst also ensuring he stays sufficiently hydrated at all times. These are Du Bois, Stealth Omato, and Crosby, and together the trio form a feared gang known as the Sons of Virgins. These are their stories. Bruh. The cool thing about Grand Theft Auto Online is it only takes 45 minutes to load into the game. When I do get in, Thick Man is curled up over a toilet vomiting, which means he's either pregnant or has had too many brewskis with the dude skis. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a vagina, which means our boy has been molesting his liver. God forbid he reads a book when I'm offline and expands upon his intellect or something. Anyway, check out this guy just playing games on his phone at a nightclub. Not going to lie though, I was once out clubbing and played Clash of Clans on my phone on the dance floor. And then this beautiful girl came up to me and said she found it cute, and we ended up going home together. Well, I mean, every part of that story was true, except for the part where the beautiful girl came up to me and we went home together. So basically I was just a weird mother pillaging enemy villagers on the D floor. But enough about me putting goblins above titties, it's time to meet up with the boys. And today we sure do have a lot of boys. Dare I say, boys, boys, boys. Rehashing the same content every video is how you know I'm becoming a professional YouTuber. I head outside my nightclub and there's just hipsters everywhere. This isn't a Whole Foods, go and buy your southern pickled bloody chipmunk milk somewhere else. Fortunately, I spent an obscene amount of money on a handheld laser cannon, which I quickly discover is excellent for pruning down gaggles of hipsters. Look at my security guard just stand there completely unfazed by the literal massacre that just took place. I clearly hired the right man for the the job. I go and meet lad number one, Stealtho Robbo, who ironically plays as a female character. He used to get around in a skimpy red bikini, god those were the days, but apparently now dresses like a private schoolboy whose beige chinos say, I kiss my mum goodnight, but whose backwards baseball cap says, I also kiss your mum goodnight. I am then yeeted by a supercar, and the jolly joker didn't even leave his insurance details, what an unmodel citizen. I get my revenge on the driver because I'm petty like that, and now it's time to go and meet Stealtho Fieldo. He's at the casino, and wearing a leopard print bathrobe, which I'm pretty sure I've seen somewhere before. Oh that's right, the stepmums always wear one of those at the start of all the independent movies I watch. While well, we wait for the rest of the gang, that sounds cringe. The rest of the gang. That's like straight out of Scooby-Doo, but yeah, anyway, Thick Man seems to have some pretty intense bleeding coming from the top of his spine. Probably wouldn't hurt to get an MRI scan, but I don't want to be a sookie la la, so I just smile through the excruciating pain and gamble. This is a questionable decision, as we really need to start making some actual decent money again. The nightclub wasn't cheap, and we are relatively low on cash, and like, lol poor people. Crosby logs in, and says we should come and have a look at his new car, so we ride on over. Yep, he's bought yet another supercar. We get it, Crosby, you're very wealthy. I'm like upper middle class at best in this game, and Stealtho Robbo is, well, LOL poor people. Virtual in-game socioeconomic positioning aside, I decide to pop the tires out in Crosby's car, out of mostly jealousy I suppose, and then he proceeds to blast me in the face with a pump action shotgun. Needless to say, my morning has been quite stressful, I've died twice. Things just escalate more from here, as Stealtho Robbo then kills Stealtho Fieldo and myself with his new pink rocket launcher. I then take a leaf out of Crosby's book and shoot Robbo with a pump action shotgun. A random innocent player is then brought into our red hot mess as I proceed to gun down a guy called Steezy Salad 420 for literally no reason. I then die again as I leap from the roof and an NPC police officer ends me, how embarrassing. Stealtho Fieldo then kills Stealtho Robbo for his revenge and then moments later he has a brain aneurysm and also dies and like wow okay, the sons of virgins have fallen apart yet again. I need to be out there making cash so I can buy flying 
motorbikes and mobile military bases and bunkers so I could become the kingpin I always dreamed of becoming. And more importantly, so this series can continue moving forward and hopefully stay relevant. Then it hits me. You know what always brings people together? Dealing drugs. And as you know, I happen to have a cute little cocaine lab just a wee hop, skip and a jump out of town. There's this beautiful moment where everyone stops killing each other and we work together to achieve a common goal selling my coke. I log on to my computer and open the drug dealer app and it becomes clear we have no coke to sell. I have to be the worst drug dealer in Los Santos, like the only thing you need to have in order to sell drugs to people is drugs. With no direction, the gang instantly turns against each other and I feel like I'm losing control. Stealth Carbo has rocked up in a pimping ute and in his short time of being online has so far only antagonized Robbo and Fieldo to kill each other faster. In a state of panic, I reach into the depths of hell for an activity that can unify us all and decide that we are going to go cycling. Everyone agrees to buy a bike and I decide if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it properly and I order myself a $10,000 race bike and in the process achieve professional wanker status. Seriously, you either are a cyclist or you hate cyclists, there's absolutely no in between. Cyclists are like the Nazis of transportation, except instead of committing unforgivable war crimes, they just wear lycra everywhere and don't obey the road rules, which is debatably worse. That being said, I'm not going to lie, Thick Man still looks bloody majestic on a bike, but all these cinematic camera shots make it pretty hard to see where you're going. I go and meet Stealtho Simo, also known as Gandhi, who just joined the session and has also got himself a new bicycle. The second I meet him, Stealtho Fieldo cleans him up in a sedan, which is amusing, but doesn't exactly scream teamwork. I'm really glad that team building hike we did up Mount Chiliad a few months ago made everyone get along. Gandhi then says he just wants to go to the strippers, but I say not until the gang learns how to cooperate with each other once and for all. Then maybe visiting the ladies of the night can be the reward. Yes, I also realise that Gandhi was Indian and Stealtho Simo's character is clearly a Caucasian silver fox, but did you really expect high production quality from a guy called Modest Pelican Gaming? Like I literally have the word gaming in my YouTube channel name. That is perhaps the most 2011 thing I think I've ever seen. Anyway, we decide to all meet at the beach and a lot of you ask why almost all my friends except Crosby7885 have the word Stealtho before their name. Well, in the make-believe land of Australia, it's common to nickname someone by just adding O to their name somewhere. For example, the name Robert becomes Robbo. So our clan name is Stealth, except we being the British convicts that we are, changed it to Stealtho. We are basically the exact same as FaZe Clan, except we're not famous or rich or an actual organization in any way whatsoever. There's actually quite a few of us on right now too. Almost everyone is online except for Stealtho Mato, who had to quote, go back to his hometown to visit his family, which is frankly the worst bloody excuse I've personally ever heard for someone not being online gaming with their mates. So as you can see, cycling didn't really unify the gang. It actually might have made things worse. In fact, Gandhi doesn't even have a bicycle anymore. He's just slowly riding around on a quad, pretending it's a bike. Man, we desperately need to change things up. We quickly ride the roller coaster together because I'm sure MS-13 go to a theme park when they have an internal power struggle. The most impressive thing, however, is how we all disembark the ride in a synchronized fashion which is by far the best organized thing we have ever done. I spot some jet skis and proceed to elegantly swan dive into the deceptively shallow water, which can't be good for my pre-existing spinal bleeding injury. At this point, I'm just trying to keep things moving forward as if I leave Fieldo and Robbo without an activity for more than six seconds, there will be a civil war again. I quickly realize why rednecks prefer jet skis to bicycles and that is because they don't require you to exercise thanks to the discovery of petroleum. Seriously, the environment can go f itself. I just want to send it on some ocean jumps with Du Bois. The sea turtles can suck me off. We end up in a huge shootout with the police and it turns into utter chaos. But you know what? We are shooting the police together as a gang. We didn't need fancy bikes or roller coaster rides after all. We just needed to breathe in some of that invigorating sea breeze into our lungs. Gandhi says he has a little getaway cottage not too far from here, so we pile into our various stolen watercrafts and make our way upriver. 
I feel like the term close by might have been misused here as we go on an extremely long trek impersonating a salmon swimming upstream for their annual fish gangbang. I'm not joking about that, the salmon actually have their babies in fresh water, generally up a river. They are somewhat of a ball of fish, being able to survive in both fresh and salt water. Eventually we arrive at Gandhi's lake house and apparently so did half of the LSPD. Man, you steal a police boat and kill a couple of hundred officers and suddenly you have no privacy. The little getaway cottage is bloody awful too. In fact, it's got the exact same layout as my first ghetto apartment. So either the developers are reusing assets or let's just suspend our disbelief and say we both must have hired the same architect and interior designer. We have a virtual party here for a while, which is as cringe as it sounds, but at least seeing the lads all getting on really warms my heart. Plus, you can't shoot a gun while inside someone's property, but let's just pretend everyone is voluntarily not murdering each other. We each hop into a form of aircraft and make our way back to Los Santos so that we can finally complete the last part of our epic quest. Stealtho Fieldo does try to ram me out of the sky, but I turn a blind eye to that as I'm honestly out of team building exercise ideas. I decide I'll land this Titan on the street so I can be one of those pilot heroes who saves the day. I swear to God, half of those famous pilots simply pretended their engines were broken and then just landed the plane somewhere random so they could have their 30 minutes of fame. It's actually a pretty genius idea. Needless to say, I miscalculate my wingspan. We respawn and by some miracle make it to Vanilla Unicorn without anyone turning on each other. Crosby is with us and he's under 18, but don't worry, this is still family friendly content as everyone inside is wearing underwear. I never quite got that element of social acceptability though. Like for example, everyone at the beach is wearing swimmers and that's fine, but then underwear isn't fine even though it's the exact same. And then like apparently me standing on the counter at McDonald's pulling my pants down while I repeatedly chant, dicks out for communism is an arrestable offence. I guess I just don't get societal norms. Gandhi then proceeds to go into the back room and get his long awaited private dance and let's be honest, he's earned it. Supposedly, if you hang out here a lot and pay a lot of money to the girls, you can get their number and invite them back to your apartment, allegedly. I wouldn't know for sure, I would never do that. Psych, rest in peace Sapphire. We are actually down $10,000 though because of that lame bike we purchased, but in the words of Gandhi, it sure would be awkward if my real life girlfriend walked into my room right now. That's it from me, you absolute legends. Thanks for watching and a massive thank you to my generous patrons for supporting the channel. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.